Excellency Kunalasit Rajajiva, former Prime Minister of Thailand, Honorable Members of Parliament, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Members of the EFN Asia Network, Friends of Freedom, Ladies and Gentlemen. I would like to welcome you cordially to this year's Economic Freedom Conference. Together with our partner, the Hong Kong Lion Rock Institute and the Canadian Fraser Institute, we are proud to hold this event here in Hong Kong, a place, as was mentioned, with the highest economic freedom rating in the world. In fact, Hong Kong has always topped the ranking of the Economic Freedom of the World Index since its inception. This year's theme, how wealth of populism destroys prosperity. The populist challenge to economic freedom is very relevant, as uh, uh, some of my co-speakers have said, and uh, not just uh, to Europe, but also to Asian nations. Despite their general good performance when it comes to the reduction of poverty and the creation of wealth. The rise of the great simplifiers, politicians who use populist but economically unsustainable policies to satisfy vested interests is to the long term destroying the very foundations of our economies and in the end our liberties. I'm very pleased and very grateful that you, the Excellency Kravisid, have agreed to address this meeting. Thank you for being with us. Your government was the opposite of the populist one. Your economic policies have led to the highest growth rate in years. Your government pulled Thailand out of an economic crisis. Your policies have increased the competitiveness of the Thai economy, minimized subsidies and produced wealth and prosperity. Unfortunately, your government was succeeded by a populist one, and the excesses of populist economic policies are now visible to all. Unfortunately, not enough people uh, uh, do see it, but they will uh, when time goes by. Populist policies are popular by the recipients of transfers. They are popular by politicians who want to be re-elected. The ones who have to pay the bill, the taxpayers, do not share these positive notions. Unfortunately, it takes some time until the majority notices the detrimental effects of populism. Resistance will only come into play when serious distortions have undermined the competitiveness of the nation, the very fabric of a free society. The rescue is then left to the sober-minded realists who have to pull the car out of the mud. Earlier this year, the Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats, part of the Bring Honor Foundation, has addressed the very same topic, and we have some of their members here with us to discuss with liberal economists possible remedies and new strategies about populists and populism. I wish all of us a fruitful debate and discussion. Let me finally conclude with reading to you some selected paragraphs from the great observer and analyst of other nations. As a German coming from the French border, I choose Alexis de Tocqueville, uh, a French aristocrat who visited the United States of America and I would like to read um, selectively, of course, on the whole book. It's a beautiful edition, by the way, this one. In part two, chapter 11 of this book, Democracy in America, he writes as follows. One might be led to believe that the law of material gratification will inevitably introduce disorder and trouble into American families and ultimately compromise the future of society itself. This is not the case, however. The passion for material gratifications yields different effects in democracies than in aristocratic nations. End of quote. Then the talk will goes on and describes the collapse of aristocratic government and that its own way through the acquisition of wealth by a privileged few. He continues, and I quote, For aristocrats, the search for well-being is not enough. They require sumptuous depravity and splendid corruption. They erect magnificent shrines to matter and seek to vie with one another to excel in the art of turning themselves into brutes. The taste for material gratifications does not lead democratic people into excesses. But then, the love of well-being reveals itself to be a tenacious, exclusive, but restrained passion. There is no question of building vast palaces of vanquishing or deceiving nature, of depleting the universe to gratify the passion of one man. The goal is to add a few acres to God's fields, to 
plan the overture to enlarge a home, to make life constantly more comfortable and more convenient, to forestall want and satisfy the slightest need without effort and virtually without cost. Such goals are small, but the soul invests in them. It contemplates the daily and close range. Then, end of quote. Then, the Tocqueville goes on and refutes the assertion that the rich in a democracy exhibit the same tastes than the rich in an aristocracy. He says, I quote, when it comes to material gratification, the most opulent citizens of a democracy will not exhibit tastes very different from those of the people either because having emerged from the bosom of the people, they really go share those tastes, or because they feel obliged to submit to them. In democratic societies, the sensuality of the public takes on a certain moderate and tranquil style to which all souls are required to conform. End of quote. And I will end here. I wonder what the talk would say about the people of Hong Kong, if you were to visit today. Which category of people would he find here? Would he see more aristocrats or more democratic people? We will never know. The rule of law and strong commitment to individual effort, entrepreneurship, and meritocracy have been the foundations for Hong Kong's success, and let us hope it will stay that way. If you look at the economic freedom rating of the Fraser Index, you will see that the scores have diminished a little, but still it is not as significant uh, as uh, to jeopardize the number one position. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you will enjoy being with us. During all those years uh, that the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom was engaged, this venture of promoting economic freedom, and this is since 1998, I had the good fortune to be associated with most of them. We have won many friends, and I'm proud to see so many old and many new faces among the audience. I wish us all stimulating two days of debates and conversations, and I wish you every possible success in your quest and advancing freedom. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And the path my iPads books are still valid.